Hey there, welcome back to True North Reviews. My name is Ryan, and it is time to take another step on the journey of list season 2019. Today, I'll be going over my picks for the top 50 songs of the year. The rules are simple. These songs had to have been released in 2019, and one song per artist was eligible. However, if an artist was only a feature, or if they collaborated with another artist, they can be on this list as many times as I see fit. It's true, some artists do have more than one great song every year, and if I really did love multiple singles from them or an entire record, please be sure to check out my top 50 albums of 2019 because they might end up landing on that list. Now, before I jump into things, I'd love to hear what landed on your list for favorite songs of the year. Be sure to drop a comment down below and share your thoughts. Also, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel just to make sure that you stay on top of any future content I have on the way. All right, diving into the list, we'll go through about the first half or so pretty quickly, giving out those mentions before the top 25, and that's when I'll start to elaborate on the specific ranking a bit more. At number 50 is I Get No Joy by Jade Bird. At number 49, we have the bedroom pop artist Kuko and his ruminating beauty of a song called Feelings. The 48th spot goes to the former Brockhampton member Amir Van and his trap banger Glock 19. We get Super Sensual in the 47th spot on the list. It is Dram's The Laydown featuring her and Watt. It's an R&B track with sultry atmosphere. At number 46, we have Taylor Swift's most likely last chance for a number one from her album Lover. It's her incredibly summery tune, Cruel Summer. Number 45 goes to the fun and infectious collaboration between Mark Ronson and Anderson Pack. And don't worry, Anderson Pack will be on this list a couple more times. But the song that I'm highlighting here is called Then There Were Two. At numbers 44 and 43, respectively, we have James Blake's Mile High and the pump up rap song Final Form by Sampa the Great. Number 42 is one of my favorites this year for its pensive and thought-provoking mood. It is 17 by Sharon Van Etten. Number 41 is a rap song, this time from a new face who really took the world by storm this year on plenty of features, and I liked a good majority of those. For this spot on the list, though, I'm going to give him praise for one of his own songs. It is The Baby's Intro. Keeping the hip-hop theme going at 40, we have Down Bad by Dreamville. It features five Dreamville artists, and each of them challenge each other to have bite flows and compelling lyricism. Number 39 sees a soft instrumental and a towering vocal performance from Miley Cyrus on her song The Most. With Miley this year, she was definitely on both sides of the coin. She came out with one of the best songs, but also one of the worst songs of 2019, also on the same EP. Moving on from there, number 38 goes to the Icelandic rock group of Monsters and Men. This was the lead single on their disappointing third studio album. The song's called Alligator, and I love the invigorated drum performance. It definitely stole the spotlight on that record. Number 37 is one of 2019's biggest returns from what felt like a year of the rock band return. One of those artists to land themselves on this list here is the Black Keys and their scuzzy 70s cut Low High. Number 36 could have been the hit song of the summer if it were actually released in the summer. It is Harry Styles with Watermelon Sugar. Raising Hell by Kesha featuring Big Frida is in my 35th position. It's a danceable and anthemic gospel style track that doesn't feel too preachy. Meanwhile, my 34th pick is by the Canadian singer-songwriter Dallas Green. This song is part of his moniker City in Color and it's called Strangers. Number 33 is one of my favorite tracks this year for its fantastic vocal performance. Both its melody and harmonies are dazzling. This one is entitled Then Again and it's by Half Moon Run. For the third straight pick at 32, we have another Canadian artist, this time making room for the pop sensation Carly Rae Jepsen and her single I originally didn't like when it came out, but thank god I changed my mind. This one is called Now That I Found You. Number 31 is one of the lone tracks I absolutely adored from the Hobo Johnson record this year. Typical story is the name of that one. Calming things down at number 30, we have the soothing and serene song Air Apparent from American Football's LP3. Denzel Curry and his melodic rap jam of Speedboat clocks in at number 29, while Catfish and the Bottlemen's rock single 
long shot is my number 28. The Brooding Nothing is Safe gets the nod at number 27 on the list. This is by the experimental hip hop group Clipping. Icy is number 26, and that's the name of the tune by Kim Petrus that I chose over all the songs from her excellent Halloween album this year. Instead, I went with something off her Clarity LP. For me, I think the melody and tune on Icy is just the peak effort that Kim had on an individual song this year. It's so fun to sing along with, especially in the pre chorus. Moving on from there, Bon Iver is my next pick at number 25 for Hey Ma. That song was nominated for Record of the Year at the Grammys, and I certainly hope it wins. And yeah, the Grammys are usually enamored by Bon Iver's art pop. I've typically been indifferent to it most times in the past, but Hey Ma is a song that I can totally see the appeal and hype with. I love the production. I love the songwriting. It's one of the highlights from Bon Iver's career. Next, at number 24, we have the best song, in my opinion, from the new Kanye record. This one is called You this gospel. It features the great return from clips and the fusion of jazz with Kenny G. Number 23 goes to the Brock Hampton single, If You Pray Rights. I love the trombone playing by Joba. I can't get enough of that. And even with the terrible outro, in my opinion, which obviously is meant to be heard in the context of the full record of Ginger, even with that, it doesn't hold back this song from being a jam. Number 22 is Everybody Here Hates You by Courtney Barnett. On this song, the Australian singer Slack and Slash style of vocals and guitar are on full display. This cut features an incredibly snappy and singable chorus. Number 21, I'm giving this one to Jimmy Eat World and their single All The Way, Stay. I admire the rock performance on this one, plus the saxophone solo is a thing of beauty. Number 20, easily could have been the Christine and the Queens collaboration with Charlie XEX. Instead, I went with the song that personally connected with me a bit more this year. This is the Lizzo collaboration on Blame It On Your Love. This song is fun, okay? This is the definition of fun. The lyrics resonate with me. I'm trying to catch millions. I ain't trying to catch feelings. Lizzo seals the deal for me on this song, even with the incredibly catchy and anthemic hook that's already a high point for the song to begin with. Number 19 might come as a bit of a surprise, especially if you've been keeping up with how I talk about the One Direction members ever since their hiatus. You know, we had music from Harry this year, we had music from Liam, we had some singles from Niall, and I praised a good portion of them, a lot from Harry, and I bashed on others like Liam. So yeah, you might expect that I'd give Harry Styles the best song and the best album this year from One Direction, at least. But no, Louis Tomlinson is walking away with my favorite song by a One Direction member this year for Kill My Mind. This this is a heavily Britpop-inspired single that, like Niall's Nice to Meet Ya, I adore both of those songs, by the way, but I think Louis has the upper hand with the melody and just how fun it is to play along with on the guitar. Moving on from there, at number 18, we have the critical breaking point, the critical moment of realization of reality that your love is gone. It is Tyler, the creator's Gone Gone. Thank you. This is an old soul style track that goes through many interesting passages. I love the expanded form, the flows, and the heartfelt verse from Tyler, plus even the skittering and snickering synthesizers on the intro. I truly believe that this is synth porn. Number 17 is the oh so great ballad of Pluto Projector. This tune is by Rex Orange County. This is sung from the perspective of Rex to his girlfriend, and he is pouring his heart out. This is one of the most touching and crooning love songs to have been released this year. Weezer is clocking in at number 16 for their single High as a Kite. I love the heartbreak on this song. It is the downtrodden and sadness that I felt like a lot of fans were expecting from the Black Album, except maybe they wanted it to be a bit more aggressive. Either way, this track High as a Kite it stuck with me all year and I loved it. Moving on from there, number 15 is Everybody Wants You by Red Hearse, and I feel like everybody should want to listen to this song too. The song is like an 80s throwback. The vocals are heavenly, the sub dude instrumental adds to the somber kind of tone to the track and I approve. I approve. Harmony Hall by Vampire Weekend is here at number 14. I honestly thought it would have cracked the top 10 when it first came out. It's just that we had so much good music released this year. Either way, I still love this track. I love the piano, the bass, the guitars. I think it's one of Vampire Weekend's most effortless yet incredible songs. They really showed they had fun with this, and I think it's the pinnacle of their record, Father of the Bride. Number 13 is actually, believe it or not, the latest or newest addition to this list before I finalized it. It is Chat Room 
by Charlie Bliss. I didn't hear this song until November when I got to see Charlie Bliss open up for a Colorado concert. I didn't think much of them when I saw them perform live, but re-listening to their new album, Young Enough, I came away with a few songs that are commendable and chat room. My god, might as well just take the cake as the best pop song of the year. The hook on chat room is so Carly Rae Jepsen, yet it's even better than Carly Rae's song on this list this year, so I'm giving it that much praise. I really don't think you can go wrong with listening to this song. Moving on from there, number 12 is Mannequin Pussy's Drunk 2. This is an emotional punk rock song that the lyrics and the vocals are the mainstay for me. I find the singer to be so conflicted and that's just so relatable. It's comforting. 11. This one goes to Mariana's Trench and Echoes of You featuring Roger Joseph Manning Jr. This is a phenomenal, heroic, and dramatic bop from the grandiose string section down to the shouted bridge. Now on to number 10. Yes, the top 10. We're kicking that off with my hit song of 2019. It is the superb single by Post Malone, Goodbyes featuring Young Thug. The more I hear this track, the more I fall in love with how smooth and gorgeous the melody glides over the instrumental, which the instrumental is astonishing, astonishingly produced. We're going with that big juicy word there. RNP by YBN Corday is my pick for rap song of the year. This one clocks in at number nine. It features Anderson Pack. So not only is this rap song of the year in my opinion, it might also be a contender for the best collaboration of the year too. The chemistry between Anderson and YBN it is pure magic. When those two exchange bars on this song, the beat is fun, the hook is an absolute earworm. I recommend this one a lot. Baby Boy is next up at number eight. This is by Kevin Abstract of Brockhampton. This has another catchy hook, which from here on out, anytime I put on my top 10 or 15 songs, I have all of them stuck in my head for like days on end. With Baby Boy though, I find Kevin is focused lyrically and the production from Jack Antonoff is one of his finest efforts this year. I think I would give him the award for producer of the year as well. Moving on from there, we get another collaboration at number seven, the highest collaboration I have on my list this year. It is Anderson Pack featuring Smokey Robinson on the song Make It Better. An old school, sexy, and loving R&B tune that reminds me of something like Al Green would do. It is amazing. It is amazing. Just trust me. Number six is the masochistic jam of the summer. See You at Your Funeral by the Toronto punk rock band Pup. This song hits hard. It has some of the most memorable and petty yet funny lyrics of the year. The hook is solid. The performance is incredible. Meanwhile, at number five, we have Wise Blood and her Carpenters-esque tune, Every Day. This one is a slow building and a fulfilling song once you get to that pretty and charming chorus. I urge you to be patient to listen to this one all the way through. Moving on from there at number four, and I can't believe we whittled down this list to what it is, but we have Brittany Howard and her song Stay High. This song puts a smile on my face, a true genuine smile, more than any other song did this year. With number three, we are going pretty hard and heavy with the Slipknot anthem of Unsainted. Corey Taylor is untouchable on this song. He ascended to the class clouds and displayed one of the most, if not the most, versatile vocal performance of the year. Unsainted is a dense and hefty wall of sound. The drums are also on steroids. The bridge is even black metal inspired. I have no issues with this song. Just like number two, I have no issues with this one as well. It is Arabesque by Coldplay. This is Coldplay's rejuvenation. When times were looking pretty iffy and questionable if they could pull themselves out of their usual pop song formula, I think they proved everyone wrong on this track. The lyrics are all worldly, the groove is walk-along and so fun to vibe with, and the climactic crescendo at the end of the song is only the second greatest thing I heard this year. Of course, that means I have to talk about my number one, my favorite song of the year, and that goes to Pink Motel by The Glorious Sons. This is the thrilling conclusion to the phenomenal record of A War on Everything. Lead singer Brett Emmons bleeds his heart out to tell this girl to lower her expectations, to get rid of this mindset of thinking cars and materials are anything of importance. He just wants to be with this girl for who she is, minus the luxurious lifestyle. It is the most gut-wrenching and stunning of performances of the year in my opinion. I can't get over the dynamics of this song, the sprawling soundscapes either. As a single, this made my jaw drop, and in the context of its album, it is a tearjerker. It is also the perfect closing moment to a song this year, and the perfect ending to this video as my number one. My favorite song of 2019 is Pink Motel by The Glorious Sons. 
So yeah, it looks like we're establishing a bit of a pattern for Song of the Year because 2018 was James Bay's Pink Lemonade and now we have Pink Motel. I swear that having the word pink in the title of a song isn't the only factor I judged this list on. I promise, I promise. All right, sound off down below in the comments. Let me know what your song of the year is. Let me know what your top 10 is, all that good stuff. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new in town. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a rockin' day.